So let me ask y'all this. Do you all know who Eminem is? Yes, he's he's a famous he's a famous rapper. Do you know any of his songs? Cause I'm Slim Shady, yes, I'm the real Shady. If you wanna sling Shady, it's just from Montana, you want to sling Shady. That is, yes, that is his song. Yo, welcome to Beards and Bars. Your place for rapid fire, hip hop discussion, and of course, great beer. I'm Kowal Kiddo. OT the Golden Child. Thank y'all for the last episode. What episode is this? What are we on? This is 291, I think. 291. I think. Or 290. Oh. 290? We don't even know where we are with all the episodes and whatnot that There's we recorded. Somewhere in there, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't even know. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. Um, we're going to be talking about a few albums. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done a straight album review show in a long we time. Have, we have. We sprinkle in, I mean, just like this show, we're going to be sprinkling in other topics as well. Possibly, yeah. But uh, before we get into that, oh, well, what are we talking about? We're talking about Childish Gambino's new album, yeah. Bando Stone and the New World. Yeah. We're talking about uh, Eminem. Uh, his latest project the is death of Slim Shady? The Death of Slim Shady. Uh, coup de gras. Yeah. And we're talking about Pete Rock and Common. Yeah. The Auditorium Volume 1. Mmm. But before we get into those things, what are we drinking? I'm not going to hold you. I am a sucker for a deal. So I was at Woodman's. People probably don't know what Woodman's is. I, I, I understand it. It's a Wisconsin type. I think Woodman's, Woodman's is in Wisconsin. It's a grocery store. Mm -hmm. But they have a Woodman's in Bloomingdale. It's like a big, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they, it's like Costco, but it's a, it's a huge store, open 24 hours. Mm -hmm. But they also have a liquor store attached to it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, their own liquor store, whatever the case may be. But I was in there doing some liquor shopping. It was National Tequila Day Tuesday. Shout out to National Tequila Day. True, true. And these beers was like, they always got stuff for the low ski. I'm not even going to say how low these four packs was of this one and this one, but I couldn't pass up on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I had this one. This one. Is yes, yours. this is yours. You gave ah, me this. Look at that. <laughs> but this is uh, Aldersbach Urkel. All right. Um, this is a. What is this? this? Is a lager? Yeah. I'm tweaking. Oh yeah, I think this is a this is a Hell's Lager. Um, I believe it's coming in at about 5.1 percent on the ABV. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man. Let's take a picture. Of this. We are right now gonna take this one for a spin because I think I only had one out of my four pack mm -hmm. and when I had it I was already a couple of shots of tequila in so so you had this <laughs> along with tequila Tuesday was a great day put it that way let's go but yeah this let's is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hell's lager so nice for a day like this where it's about 85 well about what it's about oh shoot I'm tweaking I didn't pop my cap all the way let me do that again <laughs> It's about 80 degrees here in Chicago, so you know what I'm saying? Um, look at that. Nice light body, as you would want on a Hell's Lager. Pretty clear. You can see through my... this this Miller Lite racing glass. This probably came from my... I don't know who it came from. Probably came from my brother-in-law because he raced cars. Shout out my, my brother-in-law, Leon. And this is a, this is just a Bears... You know what I'm saying? Mug true, and whatnot. True. Shout so. out to Bears. I don't know how they're doing this. Uh, well, we got Caleb Williams. And we also got Keenan Allen. Um, so, and then um, we got uh, the running back from Philadelphia. So, we're going to see what this year do. But. Mm. It's got uh, what 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 type of beer is this? It's Hell's Lager. It's a lager. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay. light, you know what I'm saying? It is light. Yeah. It's light. Meant to be, you know, cru it's, it's very crushable. Very right? crushable. Something. It's um, it's got a a a, a slight twang on it. It's it's almost like a a, a Hefeweizen vibe. You know yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like the like one of the tart. It's kind of tart a little bit. We do have a Wiser Bach as well from I don't even know. I was yeah. Mm. Oh, this joint is at 7.1%, the other one. Mm. And then we also have some Old Nation Shandy here as well. True. This came from Kamal on the last show. It's a German-style lager with lemonade added. I don't know how far we'll one. get to either of these or through through any of them, but let's do these albums, man. Mm -hmm. 
Shout out to the sound man over here. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, my my son is doing uh, Kenton is doing the uh, <laughs> handling the sound right now. Yeah, man. Um, where are we gonna start? Where are we gonna start? You no, know, honestly, let's start? just kick it off. Get spicy with Eminem. Okay. All right. You don't have to move the camera though. All right, <laughs> but thank you though. Yeah. Um, Eminem. The death, death of Slim, Slim Shady, Shady yeah. coup de gras. Um, this is like his umpteenth album. I don't even know what number this is, man. Um, I think it's 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 up there. So the last one was um, "Music to Be Murdered By." The one before that was "Kamikaze." Then before that was "Revival." I think. Then before that was "Recovery." So I would say he's probably somewhere around ten, eleven albums. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He has three essential albums on Apple, which would be the Slim Shady LP, the Marshall Madras LP, and then the other one that was pretty oh, wow. good, which was Encore, which is 2005. Oh, wow. The Eminem Show. Exactly. The Eminem Show. The yeah, Eminem yeah, yeah, show. yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. That's got uh, Superman on it. Yeah. Would you be my Superman? That Classic. was a banger when that Classic dream song. dropped. Yeah, so uh, Eminem, if you're familiar with his work, He's really good at um, he's really good at wordplay. Yeah. At you know flipping words yes. and you know all of that. Exactly. And his content is very uh, I don't know what, what how would you I would it? say that his content is very it's not controversial but he his devices is the, yeah is satirical kinda, in some way yeah yeah yeah. Um, look, man, I'm going to keep it real, man. I'm going to just go ahead and keep it real. Why would we not? Yes. Yes. Uh, (laughs) I was a fan. I was a fan of Eminem. I thought Slim Shady was kind of crazy and sick. Definitely. Uh, Marshall Mathers, LP. Okay, he got some joints over here. More in-depth with his life. But more in-depth, yeah, yeah, yeah. his life. The Eminem show, I kind of rock with. Yeah, that was good. You know what I'm saying? I like... I really like Superman. Yeah. Like that was a banger when that joint dropped. That joint had the tell I collapse when Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That joint had yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. But uh this album I'm not um I'm not a big fan of uh I'm not a big fan of him. Okay. Lately. Yeah. I think his last few albums have kind of been kinda take it or leave it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And with this album, you know, it's more talking about uh, little people, <laughs> paraplegics. Shout out Christopher. Well, I won't say and shout he out. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. mentioned Christopher Reeves in like four or five songs. And that's such an old trope that he's done before. And Christopher Reeves is dead. Yeah. Like, I don't like... Why are we talking about that? Why are you talking about that? Like, I understand you talking about Lord Jamar because he dissed you. I understand you talking about Machine Gun Kelly. I understand you talking about, um, who else has he mentioned? Uh, you know, he, he mentioned Candace Owens. His, Candace Owens. He's talked about all of his detractors on this yeah. album. And, you know, it's cool. That's fine. That's all fine and good. Yeah. Is there any songs on here, you know, worth I like I like I like Devil. No, I like Lucifer. And I do like Renaissance, the the kickoff joint. As far as the like songs I like. I do like Renaissance. I do like I like Fuel. Evil. With J.I.D. Well, no, Lucifer, yeah. And Fuel. Fuel is a good one too, I think. Yeah. Um But I think the point of the album is to He's trying to make the point of cancel culture and and yeah. and and the fact that you know he's been in this place as far as getting quote unquote canceled for many years. Like he is maybe the 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 godfather of saying things and then people having a reaction to it, yeah. which nowadays is such a huge thing in the whole space of cancel culture. Which I think is the point of the album. And the Christopher Reeves joint, if you listen to Guilty Conscious too, is actually old. It seems as if he did not release that when he wanted to because of his death and on guilty uh, conscience the other side of him is calling him basically a pussy for not releasing the song right right so 
you, but you'd have to get to that point in the album to That's even. That's true. Yeah, it's later in the album. People are probably cut. Some people are like, nah, I turned it on and turned it off. They won't even. They thrown off by him even. Man, this bogus. Why he talking about this dead person? You know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. an old song, and he calls himself out at the at the end of the album for not releasing Chris, it. Right, but he yeah. mentioned Christopher Reeves a couple times. More than yeah. one song. That's a song called "Due to Christopher Reeves." What? What? Right, it's not the, the brand new dance. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Like, what are we doing here, man? Uh, like this. To me, it's like trying to capture something that, you know, capture a feeling that he had so long ago. Did he even mention Christopher Reeves in his last few uh-huh, albums? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't know. I don't remember. You know what I'm saying? I think it misses a little bit. I think if you're going to lean into this 2024-ness and, and, you know, for lack of better words, fuck cancel culture, mm-hmm. if you're going to lean into it, then go all the way with it and then do some... Like, call out specific issues in cancel culture that you've had a problem yeah. with and then make a song, like... Because this song, this... I don't know. I don't know how to take it. He made it uh, current as far as cancel His detractors, culture. yeah. yeah. And, and, and his detractors. Yeah. But overall... I'm, I'm not a big fan. Be like, again, I like the last album, but yeah. this one is kind of missing a bit for me. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. You know what? Let's do, um, let's do, let's do Childish. Let's do you know childish. what? No. Let's do Common. Let's do Common because Eminem and Common and P-Rock came out the same day. Exactly. So. Yes. The Auditorium. The Auditorium Volume 1. Yes. So just the other day, when we, so when we first listened to it, right, we had a conversation about, um, uh, yo, these old rappers and, Eminem being an older rapper as well. Um, They're trying to revitalize the game a little bit, come in and add their two cents in the game, right? But um, I think that, and that was upon first listen, right? Just the other day you said you changed how you feel about it. Yeah, it wasn't. Go ahead, and I'll, I'll, yeah. But... And, and you know what? Listening to it, I listened to it twice in the last maybe 48 hours. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a vibe. It is. I think it's uh, it's very summertime. I think Pete Rock uh, gave us a summertime sounding album. Yes. Uh, I think that uh, it's some... Notable songs on here, actually. 100%. Um, I think that uh, Common does his thing. I'm kind of... I Common used to be one of my favorite rappers. Yeah. Yeah. My, one of my favorites. Yeah. But as of late, his joints have been very peace and love and rapping. You know, he don't rap like he... Come together as a people. Right, yeah. He don't Good rap like evil. Uh, uh, one day it all makes sense. That's one of my favorite common joints. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As far as songs, though, it opens with Dreaming. I'm a fan. Shot Town Do It. I like it. This Man. Damn. We're on our way. That's my that's joint. That's my joint, bro. Fortunate. Come on. Beat Rock Kill It. That's a, that's a good song, yeah. Um, I like Lonesome. I like, uh, after Lonesome, though, I think a couple of these songs yep. don't really need to be there. Yep. But then Now and Then is, a, is, is now and the then one. Now and Then is the one from the album. For me. <laughs> now and Then is great. Yeah. It's a good like, song. It's well produced. It's good. Yeah. But yeah, man. Uh, overall, it's something that I could throw on and just let ride. Yeah. I do think it's kind of unnecessarily long. I, like, I would agree. It's over an hour. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's a nice little vibe, man. It's, yeah. a, it's a cool little hip-hop vibe. It's yeah. a vibe. Yep. Yeah. I rock with it. I, I, I would agree with everything there. I would agree with everything there as far as... Uh, so shout out Dan. Dan Bonifero, uh, Lalo. He mentioned how it's going to be just a summertime barbecue backyard type situation. And I think it was. But to kind of point back to something you were saying in the beginning, I, I'm really nowadays trying to be intentional with my listens. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do anything while I'm listening. 
Mm-hmm. A dog walk is cool because it's not much going on. Mm-hmm. But the gym, all that shit is distracting. So when I listen to music now, I like to try to be like, okay, I got an hour. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put these headphones on loud. I'm going to take a car drive. And I'm going to really see what's up with the album. Mm-hmm. And on my first listen, that wasn't happening. Yeah. But more recently, I've had time to just like, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not figuring bills out. Like, on the, yeah. like I'm not doing none of that. I'm just listening to the music. When I did that on this album, I was like, okay, I like this joint. P Rock is good. P Rock is good. P Rock. I mean, we don't. We it's don't a, even have to say that. But is is yeah yeah. And and I do initially. I thought Common was not coming with it lyrically. Pause. But I think that kids wilding out. Um, funny, right? They know what Paul's yeah. is, so now. I think songs like Fortunate and We're On Our Way and This Man show that he really still, his metaphors, man, like he's still sharp. And what's dope about the album is that I've made this point a couple times, so forgive me again if you heard this. Rap is getting old. It's up, we're, we're watching rap grow mm-hmm. because Common is 52. Common is 52? Pete Rock is 54, right? Oh, Nah. So you watching your rappers get older and still create music and see people that are their age care about it. So you have maybe 30 to 50. You know what I'm saying? It's probably, uh, what well, Com- Common probably tops out about 30 as far as people maybe that was on the Dreamer album. I don't, like, I don't know. Right, right. Probably 30 to 50, you still, like, our kids don't care about Common, right? Right. 20-year-olds yeah. don't care about Common. But maybe 30 to 50, you checking. You might be checking. You know what I'm saying? You might but, be checking. Do yourself a, uh, it is a little bit long though. Some it's about four, one. five songs. I'm like, ah, I can do all without all these. But then now and then. Yeah, it's a very good song. And I think it's song. at the end ends out the album possibly. So yeah, yeah, that could have ended the album. He had an outro. After <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. that could have really ended the album. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's a nice vibe. Yeah. It's a vibe for sure. For sure. And ending out, man, um, Childish Gambino. Bando Stone and the New World. Yeah. Um, he has a movie coming out. Yes. Uh, I just saw the trailer. Uh, the movie is about, uh, I guess, a singer. He, Bando Stone, mm-hmm. he, he played the singer. Uh, he also directs the movie, mm-hmm. Donald Glover. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, he thinks he's the only person on earth. Yeah. And then he runs into some other people, uh, a girl and her daughter. And I guess they're trying to figure out life. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's the soundtrack to a movie. Very interesting to do that without the movie being out. You know what? It's not the first time this happened. It's not, but I always think that they accompany each, like, That's each other. That's true. Like the Kid yeah. Cudi joint. On, that was on Netflix made so much better sense with the movie. And, but go sure. ahead, go ahead. And you know what? And with you saying that, I feel like the project will make yeah. much more sense when the movie comes out. Some of the out. interludes on the, on the project and whatnot. For yeah. sure. Uh, my first thought is that the album was all over the place. Yeah. But at the same time, I thought to myself, yo, Childish Gambino... Donald Glover got range. He's got incredible range. Yes. He's got incredible you range. You got rap, you got dance, it's it, like world, you got pop, it's a lot. You got some elements of rock. It's a lot happening on the album, yes, right? A lot. It's like, yes, everything you just said. It's gumbo. <laughs> it is, really. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's also the soundtrack to a movie. Yeah, exactly. So all of these pieces are probably somewhere in the movie as mm. far as that vibe that's what i'm fitting saying. the movie yep uh, what do you like off here uh okay. lithuania survive maybe i'm trying to i'm steps beach i don't know survive steps beach uh yoshinoya talk my ish yeah yoshinoya is rapping uh, is, is he rapping and i'm pretty sure that's a drake it's a drake diss after I mean, I'm like, who is he talking about? And then I wasn't even looking for it, and the internet is like, yo, he dissing Drake. I think it's a lot of people. He talks about rappers be. that got a podcast because they can't rap. That's not like a Joe Button diss. Could be. 
I mean, who else got it? A lot of people with that rap. I mean, he ain't talking about Nori. Nori he's, not, he's my Nori mace, is Mason Cam. Five. I don't know. Oh, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I th- he seems to have contention. But Cam ain't, they ain't got no beef. It would seem Joe Button is the one. But do Joe, Joe Button got beef with him? I don't watch Joe Button's show. That's what I'm saying. So I, it, that, then I don't know. Right, I don't know. We figure it's Joe, but, Joe always in contention with somebody, right? True. I don't know. That's why I say that. <laughs> but he definitely talked about Drake. Yeah. He, t- he definitely talked about, this ain't Drake's year. Same drag to you. Yeah, man. Um, no excuses. That is the one. That's, That's vibe. vibe. Yeah, right. Throw That's that on vibe. and put it on repeat, please. Um, and then toward the end, you got Happy Survival, which features, how you say their name? Kara Bangin? Kara? Uh, yeah, Crunchman. My group. That joint is a vibe. When and I was then, listening, I didn't even know. I'm like, bro, this sounds like Crunchman. And then I looked on the my car thing. I'm like, oh, it's Crunchman. That's crazy. Yeah, dude. Crazy. And then it ends with a place where love goes, which is like a dance joint. Yeah, yeah. It's like dance, uh, R&B. It's trap on here. It's like an array of sounds on here. And I think you said Kitten was talking about how it, it kind of, the music changes on the album. Or he was saying, it's yes, not yes, yeah. yes, right. Yeah, right. Kent. Yeah. Uh, my son, he mentioned, we listened to it on the way here. Yeah. And he was mentioning how the music changes from real calm and sultry to yeah. energetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, man. But uh, I think that, uh, and it's supposed to be his last album. Yeah. As Childish Gambino. Yeah, I think he's retiring that I moniker. I think he's, he's yeah. retiring. Is he going to do something in music? I think so, but it may be under, like... Retiring Childish Gambino. He still may put music out as Donald yeah. Lover, right? So so he may, um, because the internet, that's my favorite Childish Gambino project. Awaken My Love, too, right? And then, but see, uh, uh, because the internet is all rap, Yeah, it's got, you know, he's singing in there. But then Awaken My Love is a turn. Yeah. Fucking and parliament. straight, like, <laughs> yeah, like Parliament, Bootsy Collins vibe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, very 70s uh, song vibe. Right. Okay, right? He made a whole album in that lane, in yeah. that vein. What was after that? I think after that was maybe in the, the, the three fourteen whatever project that there's right. the, the song which titles the dates. Alta Vista, yeah, which became Alta Vista. I didn't even listen to Alta. I mean, I'm, Alta Vista was just like that the project completed revisited. version yeah. of right of the three ninth eleven ninth yeah. whatever you called it. Absolutely right, and that one was kind of sort of all over the place. He was trying out sounds. Yeah. This one kind of is in that same vein as far as trying out new sounds. He's good at that. Yeah. He's good at it. Yeah. He can make a plethora of different songs. Yeah. He is good. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, get that man his flowers. Give him his flowers. He mentioned on the BET Awards how Sam Smith has more BET Awards than him. I'm going to just drop that there. Well, very important point because I think, again, you know, a, a shout out to Black Thought. I always talk about this. He said blackness is not a monolith. Yes, it is. Mm. We treat it like it is because I think that child, and he, child just mentions this on the, on when he starts rapping on the Yo Chanel whatever uh, song. Like, bro, some people never rock with me yeah. because I never was, it's his, his journey so funny because to it me, really is. He never was, I don't think, accepted by black culture, mm. especially early on. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Doing the, his, his, his writing for uh, the, the, the show he was on. Community. And then his early rapping and it not, you know, he was very experimental in what he was doing. It wasn't hood. It wasn't street. You know what I'm saying? When he was rapping and whatnot. But once he started putting his foot in the game as far as film and whatnot, and we saw his ability to tell stories like, with Atlanta and whatnot and everything else. Now we, we all love him, but it's like, bro, you blackness should not be a monolith, but a lot of times we try to treat it as such when somebody doesn't follow certain stereotypical quote unquote black things. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fair. I'll leave that Fair. there. Yeah. Sure, man. Um, 
How you feel about the uh, election, man? Oh shit! <laughs> we were supposed to do that. Oh my god! I don't even want to. I don't want to go there. Hey, uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm say this on record, man. I'm, I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm a, you you know what? Ot is really the political. He's really he is the political guy. He follow politics. I don't. I follow objective streams of information that make me hate politics. Look at this guy. Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's good. It's good. It's going to keep going. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, though. But um, I'll say this. I don't want to vote for Trump. I'm going to keep it real. I don't want to vote for Trump. And this might cut off some of my viewers. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to. I, I, I can't vote for Trump. I didn't want to vote for Biden. They need somebody that's way better than Biden. And by now, now they're talking about Kamala Harris. I don't think she has it to defeat Trump. I don't. Mm -hmm. But that's all we got right now. I've been saying, like, man, they need to get The Rock or somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, because who elect who's going to bring electricity to the... Democrats, except like Obama, you know what I'm saying? Well, he did put his stamp on her today. Actually, the, he they did. have finally endorsed her officially. So I, I you know, honestly, the that might on, help her. I think that's going to help her. I think she has somewhat of a shot. It's just going to be. It's going to depend on what, how she campaigns, and then how True. whatever her policies are going to be, and what she chooses to talk about, juxtaposed to what Trump chooses to attack her on. I think she Correct. has a good shot. Um, we gonna see. At first, I didn't think she had it at all. Yeah. But when I heard today that Obama's endorsing her, because she needs a push. Yeah. Trump's supporters are strong. Absolutely. And he just got shot. Yeah. They looking like yo. Well, they were very smart. Our guy. They were very smart to announce, you know, um, pulling Biden out after the RNC because that kind of makes the RN the Republicans have to try to re-strategize to try to prepare for mm -hmm. Kamala because they was probably going to prepare for an easy candidate and Biden. Uh, sorry. True. I knew we'd be here in some ways. Um, Biden has been showing these types of conditions for a year. Uh, I hate the Democratic Party for the past year acting as if these signs and things like that were not there. People 48 hours before the debate had an opinion, then 48 hours after the debate had a totally different opinion on somebody that they were championing before. A lot of these people are straight up frauds, liars, and if democracy was on the ballot, mm -hmm. I think certain things could have been done differently way before. Mm. I'm a chill on it. everything else. We'll see what happens, but also remember, uh, democracy, they say, is on the ballot. Uh, democracy is the ballot. There are six candidates. All right? There are six candidates. Okay? Um, Republican, Democrat. I think there are two independent candidates, a Green Party candidate. Yeah. There's six candidates. People don't know this. People As of right now, they're all still on the ballot. I don't know what's going to happen over the next couple months, but right. do what you want to do based upon your informed decision if you choose, if you vote. All right? I'm not telling people what to do, how to do it, but do what you want to do. Don't let nobody tell you what you should do because you as an American citizen has a right to do what you want to do because the ballot is democracy. Who you want to vote for? Hey, man. I don't have anything else outside of that. Rakim dropped the album. <laughs> Hard change. Hard Rakim, left. <laughs> Rakim dropped the album today. God's Network. Uh... Rebirth. I'm going to check it out, I guess. Um, and then Mustard. DJ Mustard dropped the album. Yeah. Faith of a Mustard Seed. Yeah. And I'm going to check Bro out, especially after the uh, Not Like Us phenomenon. Yeah. Um, here's the bar. Yeah. There's a Libertarian candidate. I forgot. It was five. There was, that's the sixth one. Sorry. Word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peace. Peace.